Hello, my name is Jordan Bird and I'm here to present our work from Simulation to Reality, CNN Transfer Learning for Scene Classification. This is a research project performed at Aston University at the Arvis Lab in collaboration with the State University of Londrina in Brazil. So before I get into the project, I want to talk about the drive behind the project. So it's uh, part of the Sim to Real project at Aston University. And this explores gaining knowledge in virtual environments and for virtual problems that can then be applied to those problems in the real world. This reduces real life errors and optimizes the processes through simulation. And so to summarize what we did, we tackled the scene recognition problem, which is to observe one's environments and classify where you are. To do this, we collect a data set of photographs from the real world and we collect a data set of virtual images from the Unity game engine. At the bottom of the screen there, there's an example of three of the classes, forest, field and bathroom. And the problem is to look at those images and classify the, uh, the, the way you are. And so for transfer learning, we transfer the weights from the virtual environments, the models trained on the virtual environments, to the photographic real world environments for classification. This transfer learning approach we find achieves the best results. So to conclude our findings, we find that transfer learning is useful for environment recognition when transferring from virtual environments to the real world. And what, why should we explore this? Well, real world data takes much more effort to gather. You have to go to said environments and take photographs or you have to go online and gather photographs from various sources. But virtual environments have infinite combinations that you can create from the comfort of your computer. So if we take a look at the living room environment on the right there in the image, one could gather data from this and then within a few minutes move all of that furniture around, change the lighting, remove the trees from outside, even put it in the middle of a, a city or the countryside. And it would take a few minutes, something that would take hours, days or even weeks to do in real life. And um, we, we want to explore this because video games and virtual environments are becoming much more realistic over time and it's a rapidly advancing technology. So just to give an example of consumer games, the evolution in the bottom left of the Tomb Raider model goes from 1996 to 2013. I picked this example because the model on the far left was created when uh, when I was born and the model on the far right was created when I was just 17 years old. This is that this is an evolution of a model made of 230 polygons to 32,000 polygons. On the uh, on the next slide I'm going to show you a short clip of a realistic environment from the ArchViz Pro team and this runs in the Unity game engine. This is one of the environments along with some of their other work that we include to gather some virtual data from virtual environments. Now that looks quite amazing, doesn't it? And that was running at 60 frames per second on a consumer level gaming GPU. And it was actually rendering twice at once because it was originally run in stereoscopic 3D virtual reality. And so this poses a question. If we can see this as being realistic with our incredibly complex human brains, can it be useful for image processing and image classification as we explore here? So the main impact, we would like to explore the question, can useful knowledge be transferred from simulations to the real world to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of learning to perform real world tasks when real world training data may be scarce? 
And so we aim to improve the scene classification problem by transfer learning from virtual environments. And so here is a diagram of our proposed approach. From top to bottom, we see three neural networks. The first network there is tuned and trained on photographs. The images go into the VGG16 CNN, and then we fine tune an interpretation layer of 248 to 4096 neurons. Uh, we then do this for network two, which trains on the virtual images that we gather from the Unity game engine, and we perform the, the same task. And then for network three, it's the same problem as network one. So to classify that real, that real world photograph data set. But before we start training, we transfer the weights from the trained video game network. That is network two. So then we compare networks one and three to see whether there is a change and whether learning from virtual environments has an effect on classifying real world environments. So that brings me on to data collection. We collect data for six classes, forest, field, bathroom, living room, stairs or staircase, and a computer lab. We gather this from the real world in the form of 600 photographs per class. And then we also gather this from Unity. And of course, as I said earlier, it's much easier to gather the virtual data since there are infinite possibilities and it can be performed from the comfort of your own desk. And so we can gather more data. So we gather a thousand images per class for from the Unity game engine. At the bottom there, we see an example of the six environments. The top row are images from selected from the data set that are from the Unity game engine. And the bottom row are those same classes, but from the real world, from, from photographs. The image on the right there shows how we actually gather the, uh, the data. So we take we take a, a humanoid robot 3D model. Uh, we set it to the the same height as a, as a as as a human being. We attach a camera to the front. We set the camera to the same focal length as the human eye, and then we have the robot rotate and look up and look down and, and take photographs as it goes and travel travel through the environment. So the results for the simulation data. Uh, the, we find that the best model was the VGG followed by 256 interpretation neurons, which scores 98.76% classification accuracy. We, we, we expect this accuracy to be very high because, of course, video game environments are optimised with repeated bump maps, baked lighting and repeated textures, etc. And so we are going to encounter repeated textures, unlike in the real world where textures never repeat. But this doesn't necessarily matter because we just want to take the weights from this network to apply to another problem. Which brings us on to that other problem, classifying the real data. Without transfer learning, the best result was uh, the VGG followed by 128 interpretation neurons, which scored 87.17% accuracy. But the best transfer learning model was the VGG followed by 64 interpretation neurons, which scored 89.16% accuracy, an improvement of, a, of just under 2%. To take into account the average results, the average result for all of the non-transfer learning experiments achieved 69.16% classification accuracy. But the average result for the transfer learning experiments achieved 76.34% accuracy. And these are the final accuracies. So where did, where, how did the results change? Well, if we look at the starting accuracy, we have an average of 38.33% increase. That's an average of 38.33% when the network hasn't actually trained on any realistic images yet. This is just, just a straight up, the virtual classification just sees the real photos. But then let's take a look at the final accuracy after training, as previously described, where there's a marked increase of 7.15% accuracy. And I'd also like to talk about a very interesting result that we observed. The transfer learning from 1024 neuron networks, it can classify real data at 62.83% accuracy without actually learning from any of it. 
Now, 62.83% for a sixth class problem isn't a bad result at all, and we haven't actually performed any learning yet. So that just goes to show how useful virtual environments are for learning from real environments or not learning as the case was with this one. So where does this go in the future? Well, we want to improve the learning with deeper networks. Of course, we only had one interpretation layer. The, the topology was a, was a linear manual search of two to 4096 neurons. So we may, we may perform a evolutionary search to get a, a better network topology that's so complex that we wouldn't find it with, with linear search. And of course, there are alternative learning approaches. The state of the art for image classification is slowly going from the convolutional neural network to attention based classification, similarly to what's happening with the natural language processing field. And of course, we need to improve the application. We have a six class problem with 600 images per class or a thousand virtual images per class. So of course, we need to we need to advance this now with more classes, more data. Of course, it will take a, a lot more a lot more computational resources and time to train. But this 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 project has shown that the, the hypothesis can strongly be argued for in the in the results that we find. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. The data set uh, is available online, the, the real photographs and the virtual photographs from my, uh, my Kaggle profile. The, the, um, the data collection script for Unity in C Sharp is available on my GitHub page. And uh, feel, free to, feel free to explore the data sets and see if you can improve the scores, transfer learn with, with other models other than the VGG16 CNN and see what happens. Uh, this this was this was work performed at the Arvis Lab and our website's there at the bottom. And again, I would like to thank you very much for listening and feel free to get in touch with me at birdj1 at aston.ac.uk if you have any questions about the project. Thank you very much.